Hey guys, welcome back to another What's For Dinner video. Today I've got three delicious recipes to share with you. They're simple, but they're full of flavor and we really loved all three of these, so I'm excited to share them with you. Let's get cooking. Tonight's dinner should be pretty quick. We're going to do a mustard brown sugar pork chop. And we're gonna, I'm gonna cook mine in the cast iron and then in the oven. So let's get to make, mixing our seasoning. I got two cloves of minced garlic, one tablespoon of mustard. I'm gonna use a Dijon mustard just because that's what I have that needs to be used. I'm clearly not actually measuring here accurately. I'm just kind of going for it, but. I'm gonna do two tablespoons of brown sugar. I love brown sugar on pork chops, a little more. Um, I have another recipe I used to make with um, with brown sugar. I don't actually have the recipe anywhere. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know where I got it from, but I could probably recreate it. But anyways, I love the brown sugar with like the spices. Not spicy, but you know, seasonings. I like that combo. I can do a quarter teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of paprika. I'm gonna just do some dried parsley. It calls for fresh, but I don't have fresh. And then of course, black pepper if you'd like, but I don't like, <laughs> so I never add it. All right, I'm gonna be honest here. I like mine, my stuff really seasoned, so I'm gonna make up just a little more of this because, yeah, I wanna make sure I can cover both sides really, really good. All right, that looks better to me. You can follow the recipe exactly or not. All right, so the package of pork chops that I happen to pull out is for three pretty big ones, but we're just going to smear this. I put on my gloves so I could more freely get in here, but we're going to smear this all over both sides. And I do have my cast iron skillet heating up the recipe directions say to heat it up on high heat, and I feel like every time I heat my cast iron skillet to high heat, I have problems. So I'm not gonna do high heat, it's more like medium, but I am going to um, let it get nice and hot before I start. Then we'll add in some oil. I'll use avocado oil and some butter. I'm glad I made extra of that sauce or the, not the sauce, the seasoning. Although I do usually make extra of sauces too. Give me all the flavors. All right, it's about to sizzle. So it's time to get my apron on. And I add some butter and some avocado oil. Handles aren't too hot yet. My struggle is going to be fitting these in here. As they cook, they'll shrink a little. All right, so it said, you can see I actually did get them all fit in, fit, fitting in there. To do it for two minutes and then flip it. I'm gonna have to rearrange them once I get them flipped. This should be okay, even though it's kind of a tight fit because they're going in the oven, so they're not all just cooking on, like just on the surface of this, so I think it's gonna be okay. I can't imagine a bigger skillet because it's like how it would be like way bigger than the burner. I mean, I know they have bigger ones, but I have another one here that I'm gonna use for the side dish, but I don't think it's any bigger. Side dishes, I'm just gonna be making some frozen pierogies and steaming up some frozen broccoli. Very simple. We're gonna pop this in the oven at 400. We'll see, apparently 68 minutes should do it, but we'll find out. I'll use my meat thermometer, but we're gonna get this in there. I can still carry it, touch it with my hand, but that won't, not the case for much longer. Ooh, no, I can't. All right, we're gonna get that in the oven. All right, there it is. Very quickly came together and just cooked up some pierogies and steamed up some broccoli. 
we are back with another dinner recipe. I got some chicken thighs and I'm gonna try something different with them. They are a little bit frozen, so I'm hoping this works out. I think it will. Um, I did line my pan with parchment paper because there's gonna be sugars in this and we're cooking it at a high temp and I don't use aluminum foil, but you can easily align it with aluminum foil and spray it. Um, but that's what that is about. So I'm going to just salt the chicken. I'm also going to add a little bit of garlic powder and onion powder. The recipe that I kind of glanced at as a reference did not say to do that, but I just feel like give me all the, all the seasoning. All right, I'm going to slide that to the back for a second. We're going to do maple syrup and Dijon mustard. We're going to do a good amount of this, as you can see. We're not going to skimp here. I did about three quarter, or I'm sorry, about a half a cup of mustard and a quarter cup of the syrup. I'm gonna mix that together really good. And we're gonna pour that over our chicken. Now I'm gonna pop this in the oven at 450. Um, it's probably gonna take 40 minutes to an hour. I'm probably going to let it go about halfway through and then I'll check on it a couple times and um, get some of the sauce and kind of, you know, baste the chicken for the chicken back on, or the sauce back on top of the chicken. So we're going to cook this till it's done. That is it. Uh, actually, right now, I'm going to do a quick little toss here to try to get it covered. All right, it'll be easier once they're a little less frozen. So yeah, 450 until they're done, probably 45 minutes to an hour. I'm gonna do a quick side of brown rice. I'm also gonna make up some rice cauliflower that has been in the freezer for a very long time because I just need to get it out of the freezer. So I'll mix it with the rice. I also have a tiny bit of chicken broth. I'm gonna use that and then I'll just do the rest in water. Just trying to use stuff up. I'm tired of seeing stuff hanging around, you know? All right, we're going to get this going on. I'm also going to steam up some broccoli and the rice cauliflower I usually do on the stove top, but I'm going to be using my pans for other stuff. So I'm going to steam this in the microwave. That's not my preferred way to cook stuff, but well, that's what we're going to do tonight. All right, it's been about 20 minutes or so. I'm just going to give these a little flip make sure everything's nice and coated. I'll probably do that again in 10 minutes, but we're just gonna keep going until it's all cooked. Once the chicken was done, I put on just a little bit more maple syrup and put it under the broiler. You can see it got nice and dark and crispy, which is how I like it. And then I did cook up the rice cauliflower. It's all mixed in there with the rice. You can't even tell. Added a, a little bit of butter and salt and then steamed up some broccoli. All right, tonight we are gonna make some chicken tacos. I'm just using some leftover rotisserie chicken. This was a rotisserie chicken I picked up from Sam's Club, pulled the meat off and threw it in the freezer. And so I pulled that out. We had that for dinner one night and we had leftovers and just wanted to use it differently. So I'm gonna heat, heat it up in the pan and season it with some taco seasoning. I'm just shredding it with my hands and tossing it in. I'm actually gonna do some chicken pan fried burritos. All right, so I just shredded up some chicken, put in some water and taco seasoning, I'm adding in some crushed red peppers, red pepper flakes, I should say. And I'm just gonna let this hang out for a minute and then we're going to assemble our burritos and fry them up. Super simple. It's gonna also use some leftover, let me show you. Um, I made some rice in cauliflower rice. I think this was in, uh, another recipe that's in this the same video, I think. Sometimes I can't remember what 
posing what video. <laughs> but I had that leftover as well, and that's kind of where tonight's dinner came from, just repurposing leftovers. All right, there is no actual science to this, but I'm gonna just tell you what we're doing and using up some leftovers. I'm gonna put down some cheese. It's a little too much because we're gonna put cheese on the top too, so let me just fix that. I like to use the big burrito ones, or big burrito tortillas. I like to do the cheese first so that the meat will help um, start the melting process. This will not be in the pan frying up for very long. Gonna add in our rice which is a rice cauliflower mixture, but right, these don't normally do it like that, but that's what I got. I'm gonna add a little bit more cheese. I got my pan nice and heated up, hopefully not too heated up, <laughs> with uh, some avocado oil. And then I just rolled this up and put it seam side down. All right, after a couple of minutes, it's nice and crispy, flipping it over. So basically this doesn't go in the or in the pan for more than maybe four to five minutes altogether. So I just like to make sure the ingredients, I mean, the cheese was cold, but like everything else was already warm. And that way everything can still be nice and hot because it's not gonna be in this pan for super long. Sometimes I get fancy and we'll hold it up and, and toast the edges too, which I probably will do this time. Cause I'm fancy, clearly. And I'm just having mine with a side of some chopped lettuce, tomatoes, some sour cream. I put a little taco seasoning on my sour cream as well. I made two of them for Jesse, but can you see how like flaky that is? Oh my gosh, these are delicious. I've never made them before with the chicken, but um, I couldn't do them all at once. So Jesse's already had a bite of his. We're good. And he says it's good. He really liked it with the chicken. So great, delicious meal to use up your leftovers. That's it for today's video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. It's a very simple way to help me out. And if you're new here and you enjoyed today's video, I would love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave. There's no cost to you. It just makes sure that YouTube knows you want to see my vid videos in the future. And it also helps me out. Leave me a comment down below letting me know which one of these recipes look the most appealing and appetizing to you. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye guys.